Coming to you live from Wisconsin. That's right, the land of farmers and charmers. It's the Untitled Awesome Podcast with Joe Hurdy. Ah, oh, so I was listening to the radio today, and the song "True Love" by Pink came on. Um, and I'll admit, I it was catchy, you know, I'm like oh, this might have potential. So I started listening to it. Of course, it's by Pink, so, you know, you hear the title, you're like, oh, this could be a sweet song, and then she just went a completely different direction with it. If you haven't heard of it, it's uh, basically Pink talking about uh, her significant other, whoever he may be, and talking about um, what, a, what, a, what a real D-bag he is, and how she wants to strangle him every time she wants to hug him. And, well, quite frankly, she, she calls him an asshole. <laughs> Today's PG-13 barrier broken by Pink. Is she happy? Is she sad? We may never know. Dun. Remember, her words, not mine. And then she says that she hates him so much, wants to kill him so much that it must be true love. And that is the basic gist of the entire song. And I'm thinking, wow, this chick just did people like Maury and Dr. Phil a huge social service. Because <laughs> all the work that us, that the nice guys have been trying to do uh, over the last couple of years, trying to like make women realize, oh yeah, you, you deserve better. There are nice guys out there. Uh, completely undone. Because since this is America, Pink is actually an influential person. And so her opinion gets taken into account. So all these high schoolers who are still listening to Pink for some reason or with their terrible, awful boyfriends are going, Oh, well, this, this must be the one for me then, you know. So he slammed the car door in my face just last week. I mean, I'm sure that's just his way of expressing himself. And that's, that's what we all need, right? Ugh. They're going to find themselves years down the road with these same animals, no job, wearing the same shirt four days in a row. And why don't you go get groceries today? And they're going to be like, well, Pink said this must be the one. He's doing everything right. <laughs> uh, it's frustrating. You see a, just a lot of couples, like even just like walking down the street, it's like, how on earth did that happen? <laughs> it just does not appear right at all. Um, a couple of years ago when I was still in Grand Rapids, uh, one of my friends who was living in Chicago, going to school there, uh, let's take a privacy, we'll change her name, let's see, Laquisha, because I've always wanted a friend named Laquisha, don't ask me why, Laquisha gives me a phone call, Laquisha's pretty attractive, and I'm just like, oh, I haven't heard from her in a while calls me on the phone and she's like Joe oh my gosh how are you and I went along with it no oh, I'm great how are you I know it's been so long crazy what have you been up to oh you know doing the whole school thing and listen 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 and uh, says that she's coming to Grand Rapids she's gonna visit from some other school friends I guess and I'm just like, oh, well, we should totally get together when you're here. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Huh, <laughs> no way. Yeah, and I would really like for you to meet my boyfriend. Ugh, not another one. Because, girls, uh, when you introduce your, like, close guy friends to your boyfriend, we find it very amusing. Because we, we, we love and hate meeting them at the same time. Uh, just because, especially if you bring home, you know, one of those guys, you know, I'm not saying that we don't appreciate you, you know, bringing them along as long as they're a keeper, then we're happy for you. But some of these idiots are bringing along. We enjoy just kind of like hassling you about it, you know, later down the road. It's like, hey, uh, what, whatever happened to Hunter, that quality guy you brought around? You know, the one who always had the dip in the mouth and the snake tattoo up his neck? He seemed like a... Like a real straight shooter. I'm surprised it didn't work out. And it's like, oh, stop. I was young. 
Uh, Laquisha says that, oh, yes, I'd love for you to meet my boyfriend. Oh, okay, you know, why not? We'll grab dinner or something or coffee. I don't care. Uh, we decide to go to dinner. And I'm like, oh, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. Show up, and uh, they're already waiting for me, like, just outside the restaurant, which is kind of a nicer place. It was it was nice jeans, but button-down shirt attire, I guess. She was looking very nice. And then she did the whole eek and runs up and gives me a big hug. And we that's always awkward for the guy friend just because it's like, hey, I wonder what your type, uh, if your boyfriend's the jealous type because we get to have a good, you know, line of sight with him because uh, you can't see him, but we definitely can look at him straight in the eyes. And boy, do we get a good first look at them just based on his reaction of you going there. So she uh, leads me over to meet this guy. And it was just like, oh, you picked another winner, winner chicken dinner. Kid was, first of all, shorter than her. Uh, had a nice little ginger look to him with the like, really thin douchebag beard. Black jeans with chains, which I hadn't seen since 96. So, you know, keeping it retro. He had the plugs. Uh, and a backwards ball cap. A really, like a t-shirt that was like way too tight for him. Uh, just trying to make him look more swoop. And a hat that says, I heart boobies. Well, good for him, you know. Supporting breast cancer. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, you know. And that's another thing. I would hope that if you see someone wearing that, you're not, you know, looking at other people around them not wearing that sort of attire going, oh, so what, you you, you just don't care about, you know, breast cancer. It's like I would assume, you know, not everyone's terrible enough to think like, oh, what's the big deal about it? But really to say that someone doesn't care just because they don't want to like around in that chive crap uh, in public, especially in nice places. I don't think it's any reason to judge them. So, uh, walk up. I'm like, hey man, how's it going? He says, what's up, dude? Name's T-Bone. Guys, unless you're like Turtle from Entourage or my friend Weasel from middle school soccer since his parents call him that anyway, don't introduce yourself by your nickname to people you don't know. Especially when it's not like you're already with a bunch of people who already just know that reference. Although my housemate Steven, Steven Musk, uh, did introduce himself to a waitress at Buffalo Wild Wings team. Is What's up? I'm Moosh. And it was pretty smooth the way she did because she was hitting on him hard. But uh, we go in the restaurant, and he's, you know, just, like, lounging back. You know, he has that typical, uh, I don't care what the world thinks of me type of attitude. But, you know, definitely overselling it. So we sit down, and I'm trying to catch up with Aquisha while at the same time trying to figure out more about T-Bone and figure how good old Aquisha just had to fall for another... Gosh, it's weirdo. Weirdo is the only thing I could think of. Because I kept trying to ask him questions, but she would answer for him. So I'd be like, uh, so, T-Bone, you in school? Or, you know, you working right now? What what you up to? And then Kushi goes, actually, uh, he is in a band. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Well, what instrument you play or, or do you sing? And I keep, you know literally trying to look at him while asking these questions but she just sort of keeps you know waving her hand doing that little thing well you know uh actually he doesn't uh, he's not actually in it but he's kind of like the promoter like oh what what exactly does does that entail oh well you know like uh he, he puts up flyers um he runs the team myspace page i'm like <laughs> who's still on myspace anymore come on really Ugh. And the whole time, he's just sitting there like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. You know, putting his hands underneath the f flabs of 
you can't tell if it's fat or muscle on his arms and trying to puff them out and make them look better. <laughs> yeah. Beef. And uh, what really ticked me off was we started eating, and that's how the entire thing went. It was great catching up with good old Laquiche. That's, that's why I call her Laquiche. And trying to, you know, not pass judgment on this guy. It's like, hey, you must can't be all that bad. Until the waiter says, like, okay, will that be all for you guys? I said, yeah. And then uh, T-Bone says, um, this will this all be on one check. I'm like, oh, nice. Supplying for it. You know, good for him. Wait, check comes back. He grabs it, looks at it. And then he hands it to Laquisha without putting anything in there. And then she's like, oh, oh, yes, yes, that's right. I do have this one. I'm like, no, that's not how it works at all. I'm like, please, uh, let me, let, let me take this one. You guys are in my town. It's my treat. And she's like, oh, thank you. You don't have to do that. In my mind, I'm thinking, well, one of us has to. This is ridiculous. I mean, really, is, is there no, like, worse move? Especially on meeting someone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, getting off track. Anyway. So we get up. We go to say our goodbyes. And this this was a bit heartfelt. Uh, as we're leaving, T-Bone uh, says, I'm, I'm going to go get the car. Uh, Josh, you're a good dude. I'm like, oh. Thanks, man. It, I, it wasn't even worth my time to trying to correct him. It's like, uh, oh, it's Joe or J Dog, you know, whatever you want to, what, whatever suits your fancy. Uh, but yeah, nice meeting you too. And he walks away, and go Quisha, and I do the whole. Oh, it's good seeing you again. Oh yeah, looks like you're doing well. And uh, he pulls up the awesome car that you know it must be a band vehicle because it looks like it's seen some mileage and she hops in of course he didn't open the door don't why'd you even ask and they drive off and i'm thinking wow what's she doing with a chump like him then i realize you know looking back on it this guy went to a pretty nice dinner wore whatever he wanted didn't pay had some other guy pay for him and his girl and got to drive away with the girl in the other place. I'm like, ah, I think I'm the one that got played here. I'm the one looking like the idiot. Touche, T-Bone. Until we meet again. And Laquisha, bless her heart. She she dates guys like him because she, she keeps saying that she doesn't think she'll find anyone else. And uh, it's, it's heartbreaking because ladies out there, you deserve the best. Don't fall for that idiot who says he likes you because your hair is nice. Stay away from those douchebags. Date guys like me. By the way, love the way your hair looks today. Did it work? No? No? Ah, maybe next time. Oh, so there's my little rant on that. Uh, time to keep you updated on how things are here in Delavan. Gosh, it's... It's been fun growing up around here. Not as ideal now, just because, I don't know, you can farm and charm, but there's really not much else to do around here uh, when you're single and in your 20s. That's why I love Chicago so much. But growing up here was fun. A lot of interesting experiences. <laughs> I love being in Chicago, and then people be like, oh, Wisconsin, what are you doing down here? Um... You know, taking classes. Oh, well, then where are you from? Delavan. Eh. I can always tell how well someone's doing because then I'll be like, uh, it's like Lake Geneva area. And if they say, oh, yeah, we definitely know there. I'm like, yeah, probably got a house there. You rich. <laughs> because oh, there's, there's just so much money around there. Because my high school summer job, I worked landscaping for one private estate on Lake Geneva the house alone I think was worth around like 12 million don't even want to know what like the actual cost of the entire property was and to give you a clue of like the type of money around there uh, Wrigley Field 
Wrigley Gum Company. Yeah, that same Wrigley had this place two houses down from ours. So that kind of money. We got to see his chopper take off every once in a while as he flew to work. Ridiculous. And the property uh, in between ours was actually belonged to his sister. And I got a kick out of this because the only reason she kept it was so that he wouldn't have it. Because it was left to her in the will, but she really doesn't need it. They use it two weeks out of the year. They come up for 4th of July weekend and the week after, and that's all they use it for. And that they still pay for the house and everything that goes into it. They pay for constant landscaping on there. Just so that her brother won't touch it. Makes you proud to be an American, doesn't it? <laughs> and then I'm... And I just sort of like side comment, yeah, well, uh, I basically live amongst the people in my class who work for you lovely people over there on the lake. I still remember working uh, on some hedges on the lakeshore one time, and <laughs> some ladies walking past, I hear them clearly say this, like, oh, they must be working that poor Mexican so much, that's the palest Mexican I've ever seen. Yeah! Can you believe it? And, like, obviously I wasn't too offended. But, I mean, you know, some other people, it's like, eh, that's, it's kind of, ooh. But apparently they're okay to say it. Because Delvin is, I think, around 35% Latino now. I work with three out of my four main coworkers now are Mexican. And growing up with Mexican friends was fun. It really was playing youth soccer uh they don't the ref would read off the names to like check your equipment beforehand and you'd stuff like daniel delgado jose alvarez joseph hierte and then the skinny white kid comes out <laughs> oh crap messed that one up going with mexican friends was cool uh because they tend to be a little shorter as and I, as a kid, just sort of stood out, was maybe a little taller than them, so I always looked older until we all turned, I don't know, 12, and they started growing facial hair, and I'm still waiting for my first chin hair to grow. Waiting for my first nose hair, even. It was a little sad. And the Mexicans at work now are great. I walked into work uh, a couple weeks ago, Went in the break room, clocked in, went on to the main floor, and Chente, Chente, my coworker, uh, comes walking towards me. He's like, yo, yo. I'll get to that in a second. Yo, yo, vamonos. I'm like, okay, what, what could this be? Am I in some sort of trouble? He takes me back to the break room, and then he pulls out this backpack, and there's a fifth of tequila. He hands it to me. He's like, mezcal. I'm not sure what that... Oh, that's the name of the tequila. H.O. in Mexico. Like, oh, yeah, that's... That's real tequila, Chente. Yep. Um, What do I do with this? He's like, you keep. Like, all of it? Yeah. Like, what for? He literally just, like, shrugs his shoulder and says, Thursday. <laughs> tequila Thursdays. Who would have known? Uh... So yeah, he calls me Yo-Yo. They all call me Yo-Yo because I work for my uncle's recycling factory and I work with my cousin Tyler, who is a couple years younger than me. And, you know, we grew up kind of talking to each other in like, you know, little cute family nicknames. I just didn't expect to hear the same thing at work. Well, I showed up and sure enough, he just calls me Jojo. Jojo, how you doing today, Jojo? What's happening, Jojo? I'm just like, oh, this is a little embarrassing. So, Mario, Chente, and Angel. I'm pretty sure it's Angel, but everyone calls him Angel. I don't know. They got a huge kick out of that, but they can't say J, so it's Yo-Yo. Que pasa, Yo-Yo? And then they try to, like, mimic the cute Tyler voice along with it. Oh, yo, yo. Every single day I go into work now. 
So out of the myriad of nicknames I've had over the years, this uh, is definitely a little different. The Big Hurt, J Hurt, Sneaks, and of course Yo-Yo. <laughs> Love it! Because I wasn't sure. I'm surprised that he kept saying the family name. Because I work for my uncle. His name's Henry. But I grew up calling him Uncle Spanky. We all call him Uncle Spanky. Since this is work, I didn't want to feel, you know. I didn't realize other people also call him Spank. Uh, just a select few. But I felt weird saying it. So I'm like, um, what's up, Uncle Spank? Ooh, that, that doesn't sound right here at work. Um... Mr. Van Dyken. Oh, I, I couldn't personally say that. And then he's like, Joe, why don't you just, you know, pick a name. Just stick with it. I just got like this grin on my face. Like, oh, he can't can't give a guy like me that sort of power. So now every time I see him, it's, oh, hey, gorgeous. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, yeah. So nerd alert for the day. Uh... At work, we have a um, little conveyor machine uh, for people to bring in uh, stuff that, you know, like copper, aluminum, steel, all stuff that we use. Um, they bring in little portions of it, we weigh it, and then we pay them money for it. And most people bring in aluminum cans. And so we since that's the most popular we have this little conveyor to you know put them all in sort them out dump them away all that other good stuff so we have these huge amounts of cans every day and naturally that attracts a bunch of bees i'm not sure why but the bees never sting me but people are always asking you know oh you get stung pretty often by these things you know trying to create conversation to a guy who's had a toilsome couple hours trying to speak Spanish, even though he hardly knows any. Like, I really want to talk. But that's just me being grumpy. And this one guy, he was, he was, just, he was just getting on my nerves. Just being that annoying type. It's like, oh, why, why, why wouldn't that go in? It's because it's glass. We can't have it on there. But it's still a bottle. It's like, so what? It's not aluminum. I can't pay you for this. You're just getting ticked by me. They started asking about the bees. He's like, uh, you, you get stung pretty often here? It's like, uh, surprisingly, no. They must really like me or something. Eh, yeah, they don't seem all that big anyway. You know, I could probably take a couple. And then, in my mind, I was kind of thinking, like, oh, I kind of wish they'd go ahead and sting him. And they actually went and stung him. He got stung once by the bees. And I was so... Like I, I was like, "Oh, are you all right, sir?" He's like, oh, a little, little freaking thing got me. Rawr. But in my mind, like my very first thought was, "Oh my gosh, this is like Harry Potter, except it's not snakes. I can talk to bees. I'm a buzzle mouth." <laughs> that was the very first thought that came into my head, and it's funny because first was you know like my fake reaction of wanting to help the guy. But not only that, my second thought was, oh, magic. And then it was my third thought saying, oh, that's kind of a real douche move to go ahead and wish someone to get stung by a bee. But I don't know. He's not affecting me much. My conscience is clear. So anyway, I thought I'd leave with that little antidote. I am just about out of time for this one. So I hope everyone's doing great, and I hope you tune in next week. Take care, you guys. Hurry out.